Hello everybody, Flick here and it's time for you yet another Let's Look At and this time it is Space Hulk, the newly released as of yesterday game on iOS devices, although I'm playing this um, on the Steam version, um, there is an interactivity between all versions. Just for a quick first look overview type thing, because review copies were hard to find apparently, uh, we're going to ignore multiplayer because you have to set up a separate account so that uh, games can track over devices. If I go into here I think it says that, yeah, it allows it across friends list and swapping devices to play games. So like say you started a game on the Steam version, you could carry it on if you were playing on say an iPad for for instance. There's also the Librarium, that's just where you learn to play the game, where you customise your chapter banner and where you can buy DLC if you so choose. There's one available already at launch, it's a extra skin for jeans dealers. But we're just going to go straight into the campaign to show how this plays. It is based on the board game of the same name, not technically the Warhammer 40k game because the rules in the Space Hulk board game are different. So I do have a story mode in progress but new to this version is a three mission prequel. Basically it's just a tutorial so I'm not going to do those because they're very very basic. I am going to go into the Sin of Damnation which is the name of the missions from the original board game and that is all of them right there. As you can see I've done the first three so I've done six missions in total. The prequel missions were very quick. Did I say missiles? Prequel missions were very quick. The the ones in the main campaign here are actually fairly lengthy and very difficult actually some of them. So I'm, I'll replay uh, the suicide mission one. I think there's an achievement for doing the suicide mission without actually losing anybody. I'd love to be able to do that because I survived with one marine. Oh, I'll let him talk. Escape pods in a sector well beyond our established perimeter. The enemy must not escape. Cleanse the control room. No matter the cost, this will be done. Okay, he's going to talk a bit more, but I'll just talk over now. So this first mission up here in this square here is an area that the Flamer Terminator has to burn, and everyone else is pretty much fodder. Yes, and that's where all the gene stealers are going to flood in from. So, even though this is mission one, I couldn't do it first attempt. In fact, I think it took me three attempts, and on that third attempt, the Flamer Terminator was the only one to survive. He was one turn away from getting utterly murdered, and I very luckily managed to burn the target area. So, yeah, apparently you can do this without anyone dying. I am going to attempt that now as I show how the game plays, but do not expect much. There are some issues I have with the close combat features of the game, although I think that may be because I'm used to 40k as opposed to the Space Hulk board game. Maybe Terminators were easy to kill in the board game, but I'm kind of annoyed that they die so easily in hand-to-hand. -hand. I understand that Gene Steelers don't have ranged weapons, so they have to be good in close combat. But, I mean, see, when you've got a sergeant with a storm shield and thunder hammer, I don't expect him to die to the first little Gene Stealer that runs into it. And that's happened to me twice. Although, I think the sergeant in this mission is only equipped with a... Yeah, he's equipped with a power sword. So I've got a power sword, Terminator... Flamer Terminator and then three Storm Bolter and Power Fist Terminators. And I can deploy them in any order I want. So I'm going to start with the Sergeant and then I'm going to have one of the Storm Bolter guys, then I'm going to have the Flamer and then I'm going to have the other two Storm Bolters. So although the map looks like this, you can zoom out very far to get a nice tactical overlay. You can see those red pulsing bits, that's where the Gene Stealers can potentially spawn. You can also just go straight strategic view, which I imagine will be far easier on, say, iOS devices not running the battery down in like five minutes. But that's a boring view. I'm going to go nice and close. There is actually a lot of detail in the game if you zoom in. I mean, some of the models are a little bit meh, but the detailed design and whatnot on the actual Space Hulk itself is really interesting. So we'll just press deploy now and my Terminators will teleport in. I probably should have zoomed in on where they were, first of all, but... So at the start of your turn you get CP, command points, that's down in the bottom left there. That is action points above and beyond the set four that every Terminator has. And if you have a Sergeant, which I do, there he is there, you can choose to re-roll them at the start of your turn. However, because I got four out of six, potentially because it's basically a D6 roll, I'm going to stick with the four. So I guess if you're not at all familiar with Space Hulk, the idea is you're controlling a very elite team of Terminators against waves of gene stealers, which are Tyranids, melee-based, horrible aliens. I think the aliens from Aliens, and <laughs> you're, you're not wrong. So, we have actions. We can storm boat or fire. We can use our power sword or power fist with the other guys. We can go on Overwatch. We can guard, which lets you re-roll close combat dice. It talks about rolls and whatnot, even though you technically don't make them. They're all done kind of behind the scenes, although you will see in this box over here the rolls that were made, so you know what happens. Uh, you can also set move and fire 
and you can open and close doors at the cost of one AP. Although I, uh, I don't really see the point of opening and closing doors. I thought you could jam the door so that you could slow down gene stealers. It doesn't seem to work that way, so I'm not sure. So we'll just move him forward, his four, I guess. Also, you'll notice in the top right here, I love this feature. You get, like, cameras mounted on them so that you can see what they see. It doesn't really add anything to the tactical benefit of the game. I just really like how it looks. It has a really nice aesthetic. And then we'll move... No, not the flamer guy next. The only thing I don't like is that the order of the names down here is the order you had them to deploy, not the order you actually deployed them in. So yeah, my number two might be the flamer guy, but he can't move because there's a stormboat or guy in front of him. And that's another thing to point out. The Terminators can't shoot through each other. They can't walk through each other. So you have to be very careful with placement. They're also very slow moving. So you have to be cautious of how many points you use to move. And also which direction they're facing also. But because there's no enemies on the map, I can be a little bit haphazard here. I'll let that flamer guy get out of the way. Uh, I am actually going to use an extra CP point. See how it says 4 plus 1? That's mean, that means I'm using my 4 action points as standard. And then I'm using up 1 of the CP if I want to move there. Which I'm going to do. Acknowledged. And then he's going to lumber around up there. But then I'm going to change Terminator. Use up another CP to walk him forward quite far. And that's going to leave you with two CP to, to use. And if you have CP to use at the end of a turn, you might as well try and find something to do with them. Because otherwise it's going to waste. Because at the end of the, at the start of your next turn, it generates more. So I'm going to move the sergeant forward one more. That door... I could technically use the CP to open the door, actually. And yeah, I'm going to do that. So there you go. He's got a nice brooding look down the hallway and then I'm going to press end turn and then some gene stealers are going to teleport in and we'll see what they decide to do. I'm curious if it's the same every time. Assuming that's actually a pack of three, you can't tell unless you can see them or if they get really close. So that's why it looks like there might be what, two there, might be three there. It's so that you can't plan ahead based on how many enemies are coming from whatever direction. So, hmm, what am I going to do here? The flamer also, I should have pointed this out, it has limited uses. It's the same with the Assault Cannon Terminators once you get to later missions. So one of the criteria is you can't use up all six ammo getting to the control room because you need at least one to burn the control room. Now who's this Terminator here right at the door there? That's him. He is going to turn. So for that I left click and pull and he will turn to face the door. I will then open the door and then go on Overwatch. Securing position. So he will fire as soon as he sees anyone come through that door. I don't rate his chances very high because there's more than one Gene Sir going to be charging at him and Stormbotters seem to miss an awful lot. Um, and also they can jam, which is annoying. Not nearly as annoying as when uh, Assault Cannon jams, believe me, but still. So there's a door there that takes up an action point to use. I, th I believe the tutorial said that Gene... Oh, please excuse my watch beeping. It's early in the morning when I'm recording this. That also might be why my throat sounds sore. Um, Gene Steelers have six action points and every single thing they do takes one action point, I believe the tutorial said, so not that they can go on Overwatch or anything either. Uh, I'm just debating where to put people. If I put him there, Securing but I'm going to try and play a bit cautiously because I think I was rushing when I did it before and that's why everything went horrible really quick. And then he's going to go on Overwatch using two of the Holy CP position. availables. And then, who do I want next? Flamer guy can go next using up one CP. To fire the flamer, it takes up two AP as opposed to one also. Okay, he's going to do that, and then who's left? He's going to follow behind him just with his four movement. And then this guy, he could be my backup for this guy when he inevitably dies, because believe me, he is going to die. Uh, I could actually make him face this way. I'm just thinking for a second. I'm going to make him go there and use up the rest of the... No, that's not going to use up. That's going to use two of the three CP to turn around and face that way. I don't think I can close the door from that square, though. That's annoying. No, I'm kind of just leaving him to his own demise, but... That's unfortunately what I have to do. It's a suicide mission. I mean, I know I'm trying to aim for doing it without losing anybody, but it's very hard. In turn, let's see what the Gene Steelers do. Some shooting should probably start down here right now. Oh good, there's four of them. And he jammed. missed, and his weapon jammed! Weapon he used up one of his leftover, uh, one of the leftover CP to unjam his gun, but unfortunately that wasn't good enough. He didn't kill a single thing. So what did he do? He sustains a kill on a 5+, plus. he rolled two ones. Yeah, that's about how lucky I am when I play 40k. Now, however, the sergeant got lucky with his overwatch. He killed one of them. Is he going to kill him too? No, he f Oh yes, he is! You can always tell, it's like XCOM, if an animation plays, you've definitely got the kill. And what about this guy? 
No, nope, they're not moving. They're just spawning in. So now I've got two problems up there that need to be dealt with. I've got six CP again, which is actually really good. Let me just debate. Now, when I was doing this the first time, I thought, oh, I've got a power sword, and he's a sergeant. He's probably good in combat. I went, I did this, where he kind of moved up there and got into combat, died instantly. So I am very wary of trusting, trusting close combat. So, and, I'm, I, and also, I would not put any stock in the sergeant being any better than, say, a regular guy. So he's going to move up there, and he's going to turn that way. He's going to overwatch them as they come around the corner. That's my plan, anyway, because I don't think he can shoot them diagonally. But we'll see, because if that lights up, it means he can. No, he can't. Okay, so Overwatch, use up a CP for that. Flamer Guy. Now, what's Flamer Guy going to do? Flamer Guy is going to walk there with all four of his movement. And then I'm going to use two CP to use up one of his Flamer Charges, and I'm going to burn that corridor and anyone in it. But maybe I should burn there just to be cautious, because stuff could spawn down there. Hmm... No, I'm definitely going to get killed if I do that. Do it. So that fire will last. Yep, it burned whatever was there. A blip died. It burns until the start of my next turn, so you can use the flamer to block passages. However, you've obviously got to be cautious. You need one flame to win the mission. So who's next? The guy with the gene stealer problem is next. I could technically... Oh, his gun's jammed as well, so I need to use an AP to unjam for sure. Um, what am I going to do with you? I'm going to try and kill things, I guess. Go. Oh, he got the first one. That's not bad. Do the next one. Come on. No, no, you missed that one. Hmm, I'm debating what to do with my CP now. I could close the door with one CP, back up with another one, and then go on Overwatch. I am going to risk that. Close the door. And then... No, I don't want you to face that way. I want you to face... No, I want you to go there and face that way. That's going to use up to... Ah, I don't have enough to go on Overwatch if I do that. Um... Oh, he's dead either way where he is standing now. Oh, I don't know how to cancel. There we go. That's how you cancel. I am actually just going to go on Overwatch at the door then because I can't move man going Overwatch. Next guy is this guy. He is going to be fodder to protect the back of the Flamer guy, I guess. This guy is going to move... Two back. Securing position. He's going to close the door and go on Overwatch with the last two points Open available. One action point, one CP. And in turn, and we'll see what horrible madness happens now. I suspect he's going to die and the sergeant's going to die. Oh, he got lucky. If he kills that one, he's weapon safe. Jammed. No, he's weapon jammed. <laughs> he doesn't have a CP or action point to unjam it during the turn, so he's probably going to die in close combat right now. Yep, there you go. Instantly killed. Does it tell you what gene stealers have to hit to get a kill? Oh, I wasn't expecting them to get a second turn. That's not good. If you had the turn left over to hit him in the back, he's definitely dead. And he's probably going to die too. I've never actually seen a power fist get a kill in this game, so I've got no idea what it looks like. So, things could be going better is the the overarching theme here. Although, I, I, as I was saying, I really hate how weak the Terminators are in combat. I get that Gene Sears can only attack in close combat, so it makes sense that it's they're good at it, but... Nah, don't like that. Uh, I'm only going to use... Two, I would need to turn around, though. I need to shoot this one in the back, because I don't want to waste the Flamer guy's turn doing it. Come okay, on, lumber around, turn around. Oh, I don't understand why he got to shoot there. He wasn't on Overwatch, and I didn't use Moving Fire. Although, maybe I should have. So that's all his AP used up, unfortunately. So I'll see how much CP I have left after I deal with Flamer Guy. That would use up two. And that could potentially be bad down there. He's going to go there. That's going to use up three out of the four. Yep, do that. And he is going to burn them with Righteous Fire. Yeah, man, get moving. I'm kind of throwing him to the dogs. Because I believe I'm going to use up all the CP. No, I'm going to use up two, so he's going to have one left. I could technically turn him to at least face his death. Like a man. And then he is going to use two of the CP to burn their faces off. Uh, 
Okay, so I have one CP left to use. Face your death with honor. Can I turn you with one CP? I should be able to. Surely it doesn't take two CP to turn fully around. Uh, apparently it does. Um, in that case, he's going to use it to move a bit forwards towards his goal again. And end turn. So they're obviously going to get straight through the door. They're going to annihilate him, but hopefully they're going to block the passage so they can't quite catch the flamethrower guy. Yep, poked him in the bum and he's died. Yeah, we didn't have as much movement as I thought they would after killing him. So in a repeat of the last time I did this, only the flamethrower guy lived. However, there's a lot more gene stealers than the last time I did this, unfortunately. Uh, I only got 3 CP as well, so that is bad. Hmm, how many uses do I have left? Four. I'm trying to think if there is actually a way I can do this and not die. I am I think not, but we'll see. If I go here and burn there, how many squares does that put between us? One, two, three, four, five, six. If I'm right about them only moving six, I should be okay here. So if I burn here, that means they can't get to me from the front. I won't kill them though. I'll try it, because I think it's my only chance at success, and it's not a very good chance, let's be clear about that. And I do actually have two left, but I would need to turn around to fire behind me as well. Hmm, I'm just going to, I think I'm just going to let this end. I think I've, I've lost this one. As I pointed out, this is the first mission, although I actually found this the hardest of them. The two missions I've done after this, much easier. It seemed like less enemies spawned, it seemed... Oh, yep, he's dead. Assuming the attack happens. Is it going to get to attack this turn? No, they used up all their movement just to get to me. Okay, well, you're, you've got three shots left with your... How many CP do I have? Oh, no, I only have one, so I can only use up three to move, basically. Uh, I might still be able to pull this off, because I can burn in front of me again and stop them getting to me. Yeah, you are surrounded. You are... Yeah, it's no wonder you're walking like you shit yourself. Put it that way. And then we're going to use up yet another burn to get a monster kill here. Yeah, I killed a lot of them there. I don't think it's going to save you, but Brother Zeal, or Zeal. But if I get good CP in this next turn, assuming he survives, I might be able to finish this mission. So we'll see. I would love to see a video of this being done with everybody surviving. You must have to just go so slow. Or maybe you, if you kill enough gene stealers, no more spawn. Maybe that's what it is. I think I could do this really carefully. Even if I don't get any extra CP, I could I could move backwards too, burn again. That would leave me with two charges or one charge. And then on my turn after that, I can do it. Okay, yeah, he has two charges left. I only got one extra CP. So that means I only use three, or I can only use three max. Back up. That leaves me with three, but I need to use another burn. Right there. And then that leaves me with one burn left that has to be used in the room behind him, or I lose anyway. So, end turn again. That's quite a pile of corpses I've created by accident. Yep, keep on moving, you're not going to move into the fire. Please get high on my CP. Three, that might be enough. That's going to be three plus two. Hmm. Um, I'm, I might be one shy if I'm too far away to open the door. If I, if I am exactly close enough to open the door, I have exactly enough CP to do this. Open the door. Oh, yep, yep, I actually did it. I don't believe it. That is ridiculously lucky. You cannot get closer than that. I mean, obviously he's screwed. He's he's dead seconds after this. Survivors, one out of five. 16 kills, turns taken, eight. And I will just go to menu rather than continue, because continue will load up the next mission. I want to make sure that I didn't overwrite my progress also. So we'll go to Sin of Damnation. Yeah, I've done Exterminate and Rescue. No, I haven't done rescue yet, so I generally have only done two. Exterminate was good fun. You had to like assault terminators and whatnot and you could line them up in long corridors and it was like that scene with the sentry turrets and aliens. So that was a look at the the basic campaign mode of Space Hulk. 
I haven't played enough of it to give my full like review of this, but this is more like a first impressions thing. It annoys me how weak the Terminators are. I enjoy playing it though. I like that there's a tactical element to the game, although sometimes, you know, just like the real thing really, dice rolls off screen can screw you over. Nevertheless, if you're a fan of the 4K universe, you can indeed have a bit of fun here and you don't need to have a PC if you have an iOS device. I think it's on Android as well, I think. Or maybe it's Mac. It's on something else other than iOS and Steam for sure. And if you are interested in it on Steam, I might remember to put a link to the store page below. And also, since this is 40k related, I would just point out that Blighty and I also run a 40k themed gaming channel called D3 Plus One. And I might put a link to that below also. Thanks for checking this video out. My name is Flick. Ta-ta for now.